steak, I gotta eat right You could be my peace sign I don't need that energy around me I just need sun, you're so cloudy I wake up good, you're so grouchy Please get from around me You wanna see me do it again? Welcome to the most useless show on the internet. <laughs> What's up kids? Glad you're here. Thank you for spending, is this zoomed in? It's been a couple weeks now since this machine has been back together uh, and the weather has been real, real garbage. I haven't been able to tune the clutching and I haven't really been able to send any data logs over to Evolution Power Sports to make sure the car is doing what it should be doing. Um, but Michigan has graced us with I guess for December, it's pretty decent weather. It's like 40 something degrees and it's not absolutely miserable outside. So we're gonna take this time to do the things that we need to do and the things that you should be doing if you uh, tune your car to make sure that everything is running properly. Clutching is a pretty strange thing. It's just basically weights and springs and sorcery and other things like that that I don't understand. So I don't necessarily know exactly how it all works, but I know it's important and I can show you why. So this is a data log that I take with uh, my map, map tuner X here from Evolution Power Sports. All right, so what we're looking at here is a data log of um, a pull I did when I first got my stage six. This pull is using two Gen 6 KWI weights without any magnets added for additional weight and four uh, Gen 4 weights. Uh, the green line is throttle position, the white line is RPM, and the red line is speed. Um, so obviously the idea of a CVT is to hold the RPM um, in peak power of the motor. Uh, that's how you get the most efficiency out of it and make the most power, put the most power to the ground. Uh, the Stage 6 wants to be at about 8200 RPM um, during shift out. That's where it is the happiest. So we can see here throttle position goes to 100%. My RPMs immediately shoot up to about 8,500. And then they settle in at about 83 climb, 84. As the speed increases, so does the RPMs. 84, climbing all the way up to 85. We hit 8,600 RPM at the peak here. Starts to settle back in, 85. And at around 77, 78 miles an hour, the clutches are done shifting. And now the RPMs climb with engine speed. So we have roughly an 8,500 RPM shift out, uh, which is too high uh, for the stage six to, to be the happiest. So what I did, I already did one. I stuck two of these big magnets in both of these weights in the clutch. And then I did another one. So let's open up that one. All right, so back to the data. Now we have the same amount of weights, um, two of the Gen 6 KWI weights and four of the Gen 4 KWI weights. Um, but now the Gen 6 weights have two thick magnets in them each. Uh, so we go to the data here. We can see as soon as throttle position jumps up to 100, we get that nice 8,500 spike. Uh, that is by design, um, in case anyone's wondering, helps spool up the turbo there. Uh, and then the clutching now yanks it down. Now it yanks it all the way down to 8200. So it's looking way better with just a small amount of, uh, of weight change. But um, as the speed increases, the RPMs, they you know jump up to 8300 there. Uh, they still climb, they still climb. Now they crack 8400. Uh, and then you know they start to, to level off right around 8400. Um, it is still a much better curve, but we're still you know right around 200 RPM high uh, for where the stage six is the most happy. So just this adding a little bit of these weights made that much of a difference. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more big one and one little one into the weights on those two clutches. And I'm willing to bet you that that's gonna make a big difference. I think that's gonna get us right where we need to be. 
compressor right up, man. And then just reach in there and grab your little weighty weight. And take her right out. Nice. Tricky stuff, man. I'm glad there's people a lot smarter than me who figure this kind of stuff out. Well, Merry Christmas, you sons of bitches. <laughs> it's a couple days have gone by. I, uh, the tuning took a little bit longer than anticipated, which always is the case, naturally. But, uh, yeah, the holidays came up, did the whole Christmas thing. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Um, I'm out here now doing some tuning and we got her. We freaking got her. Check this out. Let's open up today's logs. And here's today's. All right, so here we're running uh, three of the KWI Gen 6 weights with two of the fat magnets in all three of the weights as well as three of the gen 4 kwi weights and immediately you can see right off the bat that this curve is not really a curve anymore it's more of a line which is fantastic so we've got that turbo spooling 8500 spike there and then look what happens immediately we're yanked down to 8190 82, 8150, we're holding, we're holding, 80, 8150, 8200, 8190, 8200. We're not having that crazy spike in the middle anymore. It actually peaks out at 8250. Comes back down, 8200, 8200, 8150. All the way up until the clutches are done shifting. And then we've got a very nice long curve to ride out all the way to top speed. Now that is how it should look. So what happens once you get things dialed in? You measure how fast it is. I'm gonna see if I can't get Dozer over here to line up next to him, see what a stage five looks like against the stage six. Wouldn't count on it, it's the day after Christmas. He's probably busy. I did text him, he hasn't responded. Dozer, where are you? But we can do it a zero to 60. Um, so I went through and looked back my old zero to 60 times where the best one I had was 3.86 3 and the one right after that was 3.92. Uh, so we'll call it 3.9. Guess, you tell me, how fast is it gonna go? Only one way to find out. So one of the frustrating things about living out in the freaking country and all these uh, these private test roads out here is it's very difficult to find some flat ground. So I'm hoping I can hit 60 before that mailbox there. It's uphill, but we'll see if it registers as being a valid run or not. If not, we'll have to find somewhere else to do it. Well, at least uh, we 
definitely got an improvement, 3.68. Almost a 1% incline though, so that's definitely uphill. 3.9 to a 3.6. That's a big improvement. <laughs> I don't know if it shows up on camera. You can see right, right here, just lighten the freaking tires up, all probably for a good 30 feet. Freaking four wheel drive burnouts on pavement going uphill. Jeez. So one of the things that I wanted to do was do a comparison of the two step. Um, so I don't have the two step on this yet. I want, Cause this is like the first time I've been able to actually tune this thing and get out and run it. Uh, get some logs and everything, send them over to uh, Evo to make sure that everything looks good. And they were gonna look at the logs, make sure everything was good to go before they did the, uh, um, the two-step files on it. Uh, so I'm gonna send those logs over and they're gonna get that uh, looked at. Hopefully everything looks good and they send them back uh, with the two-step turned on. I was gonna think that maybe it'd be cool to do a zero to 60 with two-step and zero to 60 without two-step. But I mean, if I'm not getting traction now, there's no way I'll get traction then. What? How are you gonna talk about that two-step and then not put it in the video? That's pretty crap, man. Like, who makes YouTube videos and does that? Not me. We got the thumbs up from uh, Todd from Evo. We got the thumbs up from Chris from KWI. Everything on that unit is running good. Uh, it's current zero to 60 time uh, is a 3.6. And that's with blowing all four tires off, but I'm going to run it with the two-step and see if that makes a difference. I really just want to see for my own personal curiosity whether or not it's going to make a big difference or not. If I'm spinning the tires already um, without using the two-step, then I know for sure I'm really just going to roast all four tires with it. But we'll see if it actually makes a difference on pavement. I, we have already proven that we've exceeded the uh, traction capacity of the big horns on pavement. Um, but Maybe leaving on, you know, five, six pounds of boost um, should help that first 60 foot time. I don't know. That's what we're here to find out. That's what I want to know. So I'm gonna get this guy fired up and then we're gonna head back to the same spot we ran at before. Make a rip, see what happens. Pop, pop, baby. Almost a full tenth faster 
3.62 versus 3.68. I mean, we're still freaking blowing the tires off, but it, I mean, even on pavement, it's still, it, it is making a pretty significant difference. That speed, zero to 10, man, that's gonna be a, a half a car length to a full car length ahead of the next guy who's not two-stepping. Ha! That's awesome. Freaking lighten them up, man. <laughs> tires out here on the better tires <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> how freaking cool is that man like usually you would have to spend like tons of cash on an aftermarket ECU you know, and clutch modifications and all that stuff if you wanted to get a two-step. But Evo actually figured out a way to program the factory OEM ECU with a two-step, you know? I mean, you, you've got to modify your clutch a little bit. So um, KWI sent me their 20, 2400 RPM spring because traditionally they engage around 1800 to 1900. Uh, and the two-step wants to run at between 20, like right around 23 to 2400. You've got to put in a higher engagement spring in the primary, because um, otherwise the two-step would just destroy your belt. Um, so there's, you do have to do that. But other than that, I mean, it's just a factory programmable ECU two-step, man. I think that that's pretty cool. Um, and I'm literally just roasting all four tires, but you can see on the draggy, I would spin the tires like, like I'd come out of the hole and just spin the tires. And the G curve was, round you know and then you'd get up into the the 1g area you know and make your run with the two-step coming out of the hole in the boost you're roasting the freaking tires really hard but the initial like wham you know like you shoot up to the 1g mark even though you're roasting the tires you're still coming out of the hole way harder like that's awesome that's really cool so I mean, does it work? Yes, you are absolutely faster. Getting to 10 miles an hour, 0.1 seconds faster than without, you think that's not like a big deal, but line up against somebody, you know, and do that. That's instantly a car length on them, right there. Half, a half a car to a car, boom, you're out in the lead, just like that. That's cool. That's freaking cool. Well done. So, successful test, success, success. I like it. Um, Thank you, everybody, for uh, stopping by watching this dumb video. And uh, hey, if you don't want to see some more dumb videos, hit that subscribe button. Um, give us a thumbs up. You can support what we do, help us do more ridiculous things. Um, shopping online at our store. We have a Patreon site now. So until the next one. I used to be called Animal Aaron. That's one nickname that I, I would be OK with. Animal out. Ha, ha, ha.